Good morning. morning. My name is Pat Storr. If you're a visitor or a guest, welcome. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If your heart is willing, please complete a visitor card that you'll find in the back of the pew in front of you. And if you give that visitor card to Gina, she has a gift for you. Announcements for today. First, some sad news. Marie Templin passed away on Thursday, July 7th. She was 90 years old and a member of this church for 55 years. Her visitation is today from 2 to 5 at the Miller Funeral Home, and her funeral will be there tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Hilltop's community supper is Tuesday. We need to borrow a wireless Bluetooth speaker and someone who knows how to use it. (laughs) So if you can do either of those things, please see Gina. And we also need more volunteers to help with our supper. You'll find sign-up sheets at the front door inside, and please sign up. We need a lot of help. We're offering an option to picnicking on the lawn for July, August, and September. We couldn't find anybody for July, so that's why we need that thing. We're offering the option to picnic on the lawn for July, August, and September. You will bring your own chairs, your own beverages, non-alcoholic, and then you can walk up to the drive through place and get your meal and enjoy a picnic on the hill. And if somebody has that Bluetooth speaker, you'll have music. If not, I apologize. Um, We do have live entertainment for August, um, members of our church, and we're still looking for September. So please, if you can help with that, see Gina at the information table. There's a sign-up sheet at the welcome table by Gina if you would like to bring snacks for the upcoming Sundays. The treats must be store-bought, and instructions on the sign-up sheet are there for setup and cleanup. Two volunteers per Sunday can easily handle this task. Feel free to contact Chris in the church office or see Gina. The Building and Grounds Committee is looking for members who have an interest in the maintenance and care of the church structure property. I don't believe Perry Lynch is here today, but again, see Gina, and she will give you information on how to get a hold of Perry if you can help with that. We're seeking a preschool teacher assistant for the two and three-year-old classes here at the church, two to four mornings a week for the upcoming school year. Contact Sue. McNicholas, preschool coordinator. And again, if you need information how to reach her, please see Gina. (laughs) Okay. So now let's do our call to worship, and you have bulletins because you will respond to what I say, I hope. Ready? People of God, look around and see the faces of those we love. Look around to see the faces of those we hardly know. Look around and see the image of God in everyone here. The image of God in everyone here, in me, in you, in each one of us. God's spirit shines for all to see. People of God, we are home. Come, let us worship.
like I need an extra six inches here. Good morning, my name is Dick Storr. And that was my better half there. We would like to welcome you to our church. We have a saying that goes no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Our opening hymn is number 499, He Leadeth Me. If you are able, would you please stand? Please be seated. Our prayer song this morning is Sanctuary. It's number 482 on your hymnals. We will sing it twice before the prayer and once after. Thank you.
Lord, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to worship with you. Clear our heads and thoughts so that we may hear your voice. Be with those who are real or troubled, that they may feel your presence. We ask all this in your name as we speak the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture for this morning, one, the first is from Proverbs 4, 20 through 27, the second from John 10, 7 through 10. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep keep your mouths free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thoughts to the paths for your feet, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or left. Keep your foot from evil. And the reading from John. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. My part in this service was, with emphasis on was, to take a part in a skit with my daughter. My daughter, right out of college, joined a faith-baked faith-based group called Covenant Players. It was a team of three to five years, and they would go from church to church throughout the U.S. and Alaska and put on skits. Uh, She did this for two years, traveled all over the United States and most of Alaska. Her husband have come down with COVID. My, my daughter Sherry is fine, but her husband Chris is compromised with some additional health issues. If you could remember them in your prayers, it would be appreciated. In lieu of the skit, I will be reading some excerpts from a sermon by a Reverend Toby Jones. He is a pastor in the FCC Church at Charlevoix, Michigan. Following my reading, A good friend of Pat and myself, Ken Schoenberger, will be talking and singing. Mr. Jones' sermon was entitled, Getting in Tune with God's Spirit. 
I read as follows. A long, long time ago in ancient Israel, the Hebrew people had a noble notion that they should build God a house. Now, not just any house, but the greatest, most majestic house ever built. After all, this was God they were talking about. So King Solomon got to work. He made it clear that no expense would be spared for this temple. He dedicated his entire royal treasury for, to this endeavor and made sure his artisans and craftsmen had the best materials available. The temple would be the center of Israel's experience, existence, and the temple was truly fit for the king of the universe. There was only one problem. And that was when a couple hundred years later, the Babylonians came to invade Israel and take the people captive. And do you know what else the Babylonians did? They completely destroyed this temple, the house of God. Where would God, God dwell now? Knowing a little of this history sets us up to grasp how radically new and amazing Jesus' teaching was when he said, God doesn't dwell in temples built by human hands. It also gives us a greater insight into just how amazing the Pentecost event was, where God's Spirit appeared in the form of a mighty wind and came to dwell where? In us. In us, we are the new temple for God. Some of you may be familiar with Sarah Young, whose amazing devotion books like Jesus Calling have sold millions of copies. In her devotions, she writes as if God is speaking directly to us in the first person. Listen to one of her devotions on the inner dwelling power of the Holy Spirit. I am in your midst and I am mighty. Just as the sun is the center of the solar system, so am I the center of your entire being physical, emotional, and spiritual. I, the mighty one who created the entire universe, lives inside you. Let this amazing truth reverberate in your mind and soak up in your innermost being. Ponder what it means, Young writes, to have so much power dwelling inside you. Remind yourself frequently that I live inside you and I am mighty. Let your awareness of my indwelling presence grow and drive out your discouragement and fill you with great joy. My life is constantly flowing in yours and you are strengthened with my divine spirit. This is some good news, isn't it? Mr. Jones says. Not only does God dwell, not only does God of the universe live and dwell inside each of us, but the living, powerful Spirit of God is constantly flowing into us and empowering us. <clears throat> now, some of you might be thinking, well, that sounds pretty good, but I've been on this earth a whole lot of years, and I haven't really felt or experienced that divine power you're talking about. In fact, I've often been discouraged, dragged down, especially lately with all that's going on in this crazy negative world of ours. If we want the presence of God in our lives, if we want to experience what Paul called the fruits of the Spirit, we must practice the presence of God. We've all got the Spirit of God within us. All the great religions of the world tell us this. All the spiritual teachers of the world agree on that. What we don't all have, though, is a disciplined spiritual practice of paying attention of listening, of turning to that presence of God so that it become our guiding force in our lives. In John 15, John 15, Jesus delivered his famous vine and branches sermon. I am the vine, you can do nothing. Some translations have Jesus saying, apart from me, you can do nothing. It's a sermon about this connection, this deep connection we have with God's Spirit. It is supposed to be a sustaining and empowering connection. My question for you this morning is, are you practicing the presence of God? Are you developing and solidifying your connection to God? 
In Romans 8, Paul writes, those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the Spirit. What do you think about during the day? Where is your mind? Is God living within you, something that is constantly on your mind and at conscious level? If your answer is no, don't feel badly. This is something we got to work on. With all this noise, chatter, social media, news, and God knows what else coming at us during our waking hours, it is so difficult to be and feel tuned into the Spirit of God living within us. But that is where spiritual practices and dis disciplines come in. Getting quiet, meditating, reading scripture, praying, Bible study. All of these practices come into existence precisely so that we can be more connected to God and God's spirit through our days. Mr. Jones continues saying, now let me be clear and honest as I can be. This business of staying connected to the divine of Christ, staying consciously focused on the spirit of God dwelling inside us is very, very difficult, even for me. I have some good days to be sure, but I have a lot of bad ones too. When I'm simply not conscious of that connection to the divine of Christ, as I analyze my good days, my bad days, spiritually speaking, here's what I found. First, the pace at which I live my life has a lot to do with how tuned into the spirit I am. The faster I'm moving, the more I'm racing from appointment to appointment or from meeting to meeting, the less conscious, aware I am of God's spirit dwelling in me. So I found that I need to put reminders in my daily schedule and force me to slow down, to breathe and to refocus on God. I start most of my day now, days now either with a long, slow swim or a 25-minute yoga practice. Now, I have to get up a little earlier to do this, but that's okay, because these disciplines start my day in a slower fashion. I used to just get up, take a quick shower, and dash off to work, but not anymore. Starting my days a little more slowly leads me to live the day a little slower and slowing down increases my ability to hear, to hear God's still, small voice throughout my day. A second thing I try to do is tune into God's spirit. With me, it's easy to pay more attention to my breath and breathing throughout the day, especially when I start feeling tense or stressed out a bit. It's no accident that literally every religion in the world encourages this practice of following your breath, in and out. Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christana, Christianity, and Islam all have prayer and mediation practices based upon the rhythm of one's breathing. This is not an accident or a coincidence, folks. This is spiritual truth with a capital T. Our breath is the closest thing we have to the divine. And since breathing is something we do 24-7, if you want to tie a spiritual practice to anything you do, breathing is a pretty good place to start. Sometimes I use these words when focusing on my breathing. I breathe in your spirit. I breathe out my distractions. A third spiritual practice I used to stay tuned into God's spirit within me is memorizing helpful and sure encouraging scriptures about the spirit being within me. From John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. If, I re if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. In some ways, I think we are talking, what we're talking about here is similar to those old transistor radios we used to have as kids. Remember monking with that right-hand dial to tune in that one station you really wanted to listen to? The correct frequency just wouldn't come up on its own. You had to dial it in. You had to tune your radio exactly to that one pre precise spot on the frequency dial. All around that channel, our frequency was a ton of static and nasty noise. 
Plus, there were those other crappy stations you wanted no part of. They were lurking right around yours. You had to dial your chosen frequency in. Again, to dial in. The Spirit of God has a frequency. And if you can't hear it, you're probably tuned into the wrong channel. So just get quiet. Breathe and tune in. You'll know when you find it. You'll feel it. You'll know it. And you'll begin to be guided by it. You'll experience the fruits of being on God's frequency. We've got God of the entire universe living inside us. Why wouldn't we want to dial into that? And now Ken Schoenberger will come up and uh, offer some music and song. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to our beautiful church today. One of the things I wanted to talk about is the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is very vital to our survival and to who we are as Christians and what we believe and what we want. One of the things I always ask myself is, do people really read what the Lord's Prayer is? Do people really understand what the Lord's Prayer means, not just to God, but to ourselves also. It's basically a prayer that's broken down in three different categories. The first one being the introduction of our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. The introduction of who he is, what he is to us, where he's at, identify him. Then we have the following seven statements that go along with the, with the Lord's Prayer. And again, the closing, which is very important of all things, where it says, um, I, I get into here, where it states, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forevermore. Amen. It's to identify our confirmation of who our Lord and Jesus Christ is and who our God is. And one of the things I always ask, I want to ask people, especially today, is when you say the Lord's Prayer next time, think about each statement, each word, what the meaning is. Remember, the Lord's Prayer came from our Lord Jesus Christ, who came down to heaven, to earth, to become the sacrificial lamb for all of us and for all our sins. And it's one thing I always, and one of the things I've, as you guys know, I've been through a lot of different things in the last few years, and recently losing a leg, still looking for it. But uh, other than that, but one of the things that always gets me ground, keeps me grounded, even when I was in the hospital, even when I was in rehab, is, is what he always says in, in the prayer is, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And what that meant to me so much is his will that he wants on me and what he does to me is what he's going to do and for me on earth as it is in heaven. For his glory and his power is magnificent. And it has gotten me through so much dark nights in my life. Uh, a lot of you guys know that I'm not that close to my sons, unfortunately. But lately, a couple of them are starting to move, come closer to me. Only because, and I really believe it, is because I keep praying to my Lord, dear God Almighty, to bring my children close and bring them forth to me. And it's a long step, a long process. But when you pray to God, you got to be patient. God works in his own ways. Got to remember that. And to me, for everything I've been through and all that stuff, 
very optimistic about what God has prepared for me. So, in closing, I'd like to sing the Lord's Prayer to you. And I did bring a little music with me, so you guys can hear it. Start a little faster. <laughs> but, anyways. <clears throat> God, thank you for my life.
Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Go forth and make it a good one. If you can't make it a good one, make it a fantastic one. Go in peace. God bless you all.